Hey everybody, this is John the Nishrants, and today I want to take a look at a very tricky opening that I think causes a lot of problems for D4C4 players. So if you're ever in the position where you have to face this tricky Chigorin defense, and you just want a simple recipe, an easy way to get an advantage with white, not necessarily the outright refutation, not something black is even going to be ready for, but you're looking for something a little bit different to challenge this very tricky opening, well this is the video for you. So in the Chigorin, um, what black is essentially saying when they play this way is they play this kind of weird oddball move this knight to c6 They're saying okay I'm gonna try to get e5 in as absolutely fast as possible Blast stuff open in the center and create some complications right away And the reason black would play this way is they are trying to from move one or two Get you out of your comfort zone try to get you into their territory but I'm gonna present something that is so easy to play and you can really take them into your territory and force them to play the game that you want to play. So whether you reach this move order by d4, d5, c4, knight, c6, or if you reach it, as in this game, c4, knight, c6, and now d4, d5, however you get there, the Chigorin defense appears on the board. And the main attempts at refuting the Chigorin are going to include moves like knight to c3, and possibly even knight to f3. These are obviously very logical moves and should be top considerations. However, I find it so simple and so easy to play the exchange variation. So you take on d5, and after they take back, you play the simple move pawn to e3, just supporting your d-pawn. Black will now attack the center. This is kind of the key point. The only reason they put the knight on c6 was to launch this early e5. So very good for them. We will now play the move knight to c3, attacking the queen. And after bishop to b4, there are two main moves in this position. So most people will continue with the move bishop to d2, a very logical move. It develops a piece. It breaks the pin. However, I'm going to recommend the move a3, and it's for a very specific reason, and it does have to do with the bishop on c1 and where it ultimately will be placed. However, just for reference sake, so that we can get an idea of the pawn structure that is going to be occurring in a lot of these positions, after the move bishop to d2, what black is inevitably going to do now is take the knight, now that the pin has been broken, and white can actually take back on c3 either way, with the pawn or with the bishop, most people take with the pawn, and this does really illustrate the structure that we're going to be aiming for. After knight f6, you can begin immediately with c4 and d5. This is going to be a part of the structure. Or you can begin with the move f3. Either way, after castles, e4. When the queen goes back to d6, we're trying to play d5 after knight e7, c4, knight d7. We get this typical pawn structure where white will start maneuvering the knight over to c3 something like knight to c5, knight to c3, is very likely to be played. But take note here of the pawn structure. So white here is going to be very happy, comfortable with extra space. Definitely, this is a very reasonable way for white to approach this opening. However, to my eyes, I look around and I kind of see this bishop on d2, and I don't actually believe that it's on the right diagonal. Sure, bishop to e3, which is usually what white will do in this position at some point, is a very logical way of playing. However, I like this very interesting idea of putting this bishop on the other diagonal, which is the whole reason that after bishop to b4, heading back to kind of our main line here, I prefer the move pawn to a3. The idea is, okay, now we're forcing black to take our knight, and after we recapture this way, we are going to attempt to get the same pawn structure. We're going to play moves like c4 and d5, driving this queen away and gaining a bunch of space. But now we have this extra option of a4 and bishop a3. And this is going to be particularly useful because black almost always puts a knight on c5 and a queen on d6. So in a lot of cases, we're going to be pinning this knight and we have some serious chances of just getting a lot of pressure on the queen side, as we will see. Black will follow up with knight to f6. And white continues with the main idea of establishing the pawn structure after c4, queen d6, d5. And now black will choose between a couple different squares for the knight on c6. In our featured game today, which I want to show you, this one from Denis Kazmatulin versus Rakim Pasiev. Uh, knight e7 was played. Knight b8 is the alternative move, and it really doesn't change white's plans very much. White has the simple ideas of playing a4, bishop a3, which could be played in this position, but he also has the idea of knight e2 coming all the way over to c3, 
the knight actually will be very good on c3, where we'll see in a lot of these games, it will have the opportunity to put a lot of pressure on the queen side, whether that's hopping to b5 or going to the e4 square. Those are two very critical squares in this line. After the knight comes over to c3, white can consider bishop e2, castling, very simple stuff. And often we'll insert the move f3, and e4 can be played immediately, but often you can just wait. For example, white here could just continue with the move knight to e2, heading over to the c3 square, and after position like knight to a6, knight to c3, whenever the knight does land on c5, white can again choose between the main plans of pawn to a4, bishop to a3, or just simply bishop e2 and castling right away. Both of these lines are going to give white a very nice advantage. So heading back to our main line here, after d5 was played, in our main game, knight to e7 was what was played. And here, white followed up with a very logical move, pawn to a4. After knight to d7, here, bishop to a3 was played, now knight to c5, and black has been forced into this pin. This may not seem like the end of the world for black, it's a very normal thing that Jagoran players are used to doing, but I've always found it just so pleasant and easy to play this with white, because we just simply continue with knight to e2, and the knight heads to c3, where it's going to have all sorts of ideas of putting more pressure on the knight, or jumping to b5, attacking this queen, trying to drive her away. In our main game here, bishop to g4 was played, but it's not the only move that's ever been tried. I actually do want to take a very quick pause here, and look at a blitz game that was played. This move, uh, pawn to a5, this was played in the game between Alexander Ipatov and Michael Bon. This was a blitz game, but black just absolutely crumbled right out of the opening, and this is the kind of thing that can happen all the time. Yeah, it's a blitz game, but a5 does seem like a very normal, natural move, but it just loses on the spot. White can now play knight to c3, which just creates uh, too much of a headache for black. The knight simply threatens to hop both to e4 and to b5, creating all sorts of threats, and it's not easy for black to deal with all of these at all. A problem, for example, is if you play a move like b6, you're actually taking a square away from the queen. So if we ever play knight to b5, the queen would have to go somewhere. And then already white is going to be able to, at minimum, smash this pawn structure. And also possibly consider moves like d6, attacking the base of the pawn chain. Both of these look very good and very tempting for white. Uh, if instead you play as in the game, bishop to f5, just trying to prevent this other threat... Well, now in the game, just bishop e2 was played, and yeah, at some moment, as soon as b6 is played, already black has a huge dilemma here, not going to be easy, and uh, yeah, maybe should keep connected to the c-pawn, but the queen moved away, and now this game is already just over. So yeah, we will just watch through the game, but yeah, white didn't really have any trouble converting this up a lot of material, so yeah, really excellent way of demonstrating just how quickly black can go wrong. So it was right here in this uh, this position, a5, already a big mistake. We can see these threats by white cause black a lot of headaches and black already has to play very, very accurately just to maintain the balance. We head back now to our main game in which bishop to g4 was black's choice. White here played the move f3. I do want to point out just one other possibility. f3 is a very logical move. It keeps in mind all of the normal plans that white has. You play f3, you kick the bishop away, and then you play knight to c3. Definitely nothing wrong with that. One other interesting possibility that I just want to bring up is this move queen to b1. This is often a very good idea. It puts a lot of pressure on the queen side, and it even introduces the threat of queen to b5, which would simply win material by attacking the pin piece. So this is a very, very problematic move, not so easy for black. And again, if you play a move like b6, you're just going to run into trouble after a very nice move, knight to g3. This is actually the most accurate square, not going to c3 this time. The point is, again, we want to hop into this e4 square. We want to attack both of these pieces. But by going to g3, we're also preventing the bishop from running to f5. So here, if black already has to, for example, move the queen, black is just going to end up with the worst pawn structure. If you let us take on c5, everything is going to be going very smoothly for white. So, uh, as we return, after bishop to g4, f3 was played. The bishop ran away, and now the move knight to c3. Black followed it up with the move pawn to f5, bishop to e2, and after b6, both sides just calmly castled, and we can kind of see the resulting position that can occur. 
And to my mind, I've always really enjoyed playing these kinds of positions for white. Not only do you have more space, but you also have some very serious threats on the queen side. And here, white actually could have potentially exploited this pressure immediately with the move knight to b5, which was played later in the game. And the rest of this game is actually very interesting and amusing to me because white was just so patient and there was just simply nothing black could do. White, instead of just going for anything direct immediately, which is probably possible, white just simply took his time, <laughs> played a lot of solidifying moves, kept the center closed, and only eventually played the move knight to b5. And really, there's not a whole lot that black can do. Black is doing a pretty good job, you know, probably trying to remaneuvering knights, probably trying to bring some sort of pawn storm. Black has these kinds of ideas, but it's just simply never going to be fast enough. And yeah, the problem is we're attacking the queen. If the queen moves away, you're going to lose this C pawn. So black is absolutely forced to take this knight in this position. And already we can choose. It's always very pleasant. Which way do you want to recapture the bishop? White did choose correctly, taking with the C pawn. It's just going to be so great for white. We are eventually going to be able to shatter the pawns here, which could be done immediately, as in the game, or white could slowly try to build some pressure somehow. But yeah, he just took, and now a bunch of nothing happened. White actually played a lot of very slow, patient moves in this position, just reorganizing the troopers, and eventually will be playing to break through on the queen side. And black was absolutely powerless to help it, so white just made uh, a whole bunch of improving moves, put all the pieces where he saw fit, and eventually breaking through on the queen side with the move b6. So here we can already kind of tell white has made significant progress on the queen side. Black is pretty much powerless trying to run this c pawn, but it's just not going to make it there on time. I also like just white taking the time, storing the king away. Uh, really waiting for black to blunder and here it was this is where black finally makes a big mistake now after d6 white is totally winning going to be able to force the pieces back and there's actually going to be some issues on the back rank so the c pawn never really got strong enough the pressure on the queen side is what ultimately led white to win and here black actually did resign there's not a lot you can do against the threat of uh, just rook to c8 uh, you are in check not easy for black to make a move here whatsoever. So I did really like this game. It just shows absolute patience in this very interesting opening. So if you are looking for some sort of antidote, some sort of recipe, how can you handle the Chagorn defense? Well, I recommend taking, playing e3, and in this position, playing the very interesting move, pawn to a3, where, yeah, just one more time, you get this pawn structure, put the bishop on a3, maneuver your pieces like this, get castled, and you're going to have a very pleasant game. Thank you everybody for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you know when the next episode of the Chess Opening Blueprint is going to come out. Make sure you get your hands on the blueprint before everybody else does by subscribing and turning on that bell notification. And if there's any other openings that you guys are interested in, particularly if there's some sort of tricky opening that you just need a simple antidote for, I just don't know what to do against this or that opening, please let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to make some blueprints in the future about all these little openings that might cause you a few little headaches. So hopefully that helped. Hopefully I see you guys next time and thank you for watching.